Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome to Mr. D's Review Class. This week we're going to talk about China and how China became communist. This is an important region's topic, so stay tuned for what you missed in history class. Okay guys, let's start, out, let's start with World War II. World War II took a large toll on China. It had over 20 million deaths uh, from battles and civilian starvation, only second to the Soviet Union. So at this point, China has completely devastated. The country is in turmoil, so they're looking for new leadership. During the war, Japan devastated most of China's cities, and civil war resumed after the war. The civil war consisted of two parties, the nationalists and the communists. Zhang Zixi ruled southern China. He was a nationalist. Many did not like him because he was known to be a corrupt leader, and China was suffering at this time. He was also an ineffective leader and lost support quickly due to the poor economy. Nationalists at first started winning the war, but because of the poor conditions and lack of food, people started turning over to the communist side, including the nationalist soldiers. Okay, so the communist party consisted of Mao Zedong, who was their leader. Mao Zedong was a very powerful figure. He was inspired by Karl Marx, a uh, communist leader. He won over the peasants by teaching them how to read and increasing food production. For a starving country, this is a really big deal. As a result, he controlled much of northern China. The nationalist forces had an army of over 2.5 million. The U.S. supported this army to prevent the spread of communism and gave them a total of $3.5 billion. The U.S. is capitalist, so they do not want communism. The U.S. is afraid of communism and the Red Scare. We'll talk about that later. Most of the money did not make it to the army. The corrupt government officials took most of the money, so the U.S. wasted billions of dollars on in China. So as a result of the Civil War, communism wins. So Mao Zedong and his peasants take over China, and Jiang Zixi and his national supporters flee to Taiwan. October 1st, 1949, Mao declares China Communist, People's Republic of China. Mao says that peasants share the land, and this is important because communism all the land is distributed equally. No matter who you are, everyone gets the same amount of money and land. So Mao enacted what was called the Red Guard. And the Red Guard were young Chinese citizens that he had go through and just try to destroy all the four olds. So they traveled the country raiding homes, museums, historical monuments, destroying anything associated with the four olds that we talked about. Um, they also humiliated, imprisoned, beat, and killed thousands of enemies of the revolution. Educated people, teachers, city dwellers, corrupt communist officials. Uh, military pol and police were ordered not to interfere with the Red Guard, so no one was stopping them. They were going through town to town, just beating people and burning things, anything that represented the old ways of China, because Mao wanted people to forget about that. Communist leaders lost control of the Cultural Revolution, and they had to call on the Red Guard to disband because they got so out of control. In 1979, Mao dies, and there's a new power struggle for who the next leader should be. Okay. So in 1979, after Mao dies, one guy Lee comes to power, and his name is Deng Xiaoping. Deng Xiaoping, who had disagreed and dismissed uh, from his official position by Mao, did not agree with many of Mao's ideas. He becomes the new leader of China, and he shifts focus on economic reform. He has uh, four things he wants to focus on, the four modernizations, uh, science, industry, technology, and defense. Okay guys, now we're going to talk about the Tiananmen Square Massacre. This is a very important event in Chinese history. This happened in June 3rd and 4th of 1989. And it was a demonstration of uh, students, college students, and they demanded political reforms. The few things they wanted were freedom of press and freedom of democracy. Deng Xiaoping was not happy with this, and he sent the military who ended up killing in between 700 and 3,000 students. Other protesters and bystanders were also injured. Martial law was declared on May 20th. The protesters demanded that the leadership resign, but the government answered on the nights of June 3rd and 4th with troops and tanks killing thousands to call a counter-revolutionary rebellion.
Okay. Okay, guys, let's recap some of the main points here. So, some important people to know. Zhang Zixi was the start of the nationalist movement. He loses support of the people after the economy fails and has a corrupt government, and he is overthrown by Mao Zedong, and he ends up fleeing to Taiwan. Mao Zedong was a communist revolutionary who got control of China by becoming friends of the peasants and the women and uh, promising everyone land. He overthrew the Nationalist Party and was able to gain support of everyone and became dictator once in power. He was known for the Great Leap Forward, which is his attempt to modernize China. He wanted to increase agriculture and industrial output and ended up starving thousands and thousands of people. He is also known for the Cultural Revolution. This was an attempt to renew the idea of communist revolution and get rid of the four olds in China. He ordered students or the Red Guards to go through the country and destroy anything um, that wasn't communist and enforce the teachings of Mao Zedong. This ended up getting out of hand and he had to order them to disband. Deng Xiaoping was a successor to Mao Zedong. He did not like Mao or his ideas, but was a reformer that led China towards market economy, more open to trade than before. He is also associated with the Tiananmen Square Massacre. He had more free market, but his people were not free. So that leads us up to the Tiananmen Square Massacre. Led mainly by students and intellectuals, the, process, the protests occurred in that year was to see the collapse of the number of a communist government in Eastern Europe. They saw neighboring countries get a, a say in their government and wanted the same. In between 700 and 3,000 protesters were killed. Okay guys, that's it for Communist China. Thanks for tuning in to Mr. D's review class. See you next time.